Hello, good evening. Today I will be talking something about the theater of the absurd. And the theater of the absurd emerged post World War II in the late 40s and 50s. Primarily, these are, are written by European playwrights, and these plays are based on existentialism, the principle of existentialism, and speak about the lack of purpose and futility of human existence that goes beyond communication. It conveys a kind of cyclic events of life which have neither beginning nor end. That is what a cyclic uh, means, right? That's like a circle. So can you pinpoint circle where it begins and where it ends? It, it doesn't, like right? So they compare the life events to that. Usually these plays uh, begin with the scene, particular scene, and end with the same scene. Or they begin with some kind of a context and end with the same context. And characters in this play, this, these type of plays, actually they begin with logical construction of ideas, which makes little sense. But as the ideas develop, as the dialogues develop, and as the argument develops, uh, it gets completely irrational and illogical speech and leading to no conclusion. There is no conclusion and there is no logic and everything is nonsensical, dialogue goes off. And uh, sometime, sometimes, sometimes, uh, you know, it leads to a kind of silence, leaving the audience absolutely confused. But the positive point over here is it triggers them to think and find their own answers. So it is not like, say, for example, you're appearing for a const I mean, some competitive exam or some board exams or something. So more than referring to textbook, people want the digest and the guide kind of a thing. So who will read here? Who will make the own notes? So let me read and write the stuff. It is not like that. So everything is not ready-made and served to you. So it is like a self-service restaurant. You go there and you order and you put the stuff and you bring it and eat it to the plate. So that's what I would call it. So that is the beauty of this, you know. It makes them think. So in fact, you know what? It reminds me of one of uh, Elvis Presley's numbers. You must have heard this. It's a very popular number of his. Welcome to my world. Won't you come on in? Miracles, I guess, still happen now and then. Step into my heart. Leave your cares behind. Welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. Knock. The door shall be opened. Speak. You will find. Okay, this is the philosophy. I don't want to sing the whole song. So knock, the door will open. Or you seek, then you shall find answers to your stuff. So that is what the philosophy absurdists believe in. All right. The French philosopher Albert Camus wrote an essay on myth of Sisyphus in 1942 and uh, described the human situations as completely pointless meaningless and absurd now who is this sisyphus and who is uh, i mean what is his myth and all that will require uh, another video otherwise this one will go wrong i can tell it off and also but i don't want to do it uh, merge too many things into one stuff so according to what sa camu wrote human situations are completely meaningless purposeless and uh, pointless and absurd he says but the term Theater of the Absurd was not coined by Camus. Later on in 1960, another thinker called Martin Esselin coined this term Theater of the Absurd. But absurdist theory was propounded by Camus. I can give that credit to him because he wrote it as early as 1942. Originally, this was written in French again. Samuel Beckett and Arthur Adamov and uh, Eugene Enesco and uh, these are all well-known uh, genre of uh, writers in this kind of absurdist uh, literature. And uh, Ionesco says absurd is that which has no purpose, no go goal and no objective. You know, that's how he defines his theory of absurd. Now the absurd plays takes the form of man's reaction to the world apparently without meaning or Say like uh, it somehow it portrays the idea that man is a puppet controlled or sometimes they even go to the extent of calling him menaced uh, by some invisible out outside force. 
they openly don't give credit to god and they don't disown god also that's a very funny part about it so they believe that some force is controlling and they say like you know it's like a puppet controlled and we all keep doing useless actions that is what the absurdist thing thing comes in now if we talk of absurdist plays uh, the characters here are caught in a helpless situation and uh, they are forced to perform some repetitive and meaningless tasks you know which have no uh, meaning and there is no purpose again as i said and dialogue is full of cliche and the word play and the nonsensical talk absolutely they know make no sense to the viewer or a audience then or the reader you could say and plots as i said earlier they are uh, cyclical without any distinction between the beginning and the end or i could use another term over here they are absurdly uh, kind of uh, expansive they keep on expanding without any proper structure so without structure also we can say or they can say absurdly expansive the theater of the absurd attacks the comfortable certainties of religion or political orthodoxy now what do i mean by this see every religion has emerged to keep a control on the society and control on the human behavior otherwise human beings are the worst animal just left loose means they will do anything and anywhere any uh, you know erratic behavior creeps in so to control that but absurd is say it is a kind of cushion you are getting you are getting into that complex and comfortable zone they say whether it's a religion or whether it's a political ideology that is their their theory okay and uh, they also say that it aims to their theory it aims to shake and shock its audience out of complacency this is the claim absurdist make so any play that is absurd that uh, apparently doesn't make sense is very sensible it's very thought provoking and it makes you think and it literally shakes you out of your complacency and comfort zone so that you become uh, you know Uh, responsible and uh, you are able to bear it with dignity all the absurdity around you you will bear it with dignity and you will act nobly you will act responsibly and precisely because there are no another thing what it comes to is there are no easy solutions to the mysteries of existence ever since humanity has come into existence the quest is on who am i why i have come here and what is this is a god does really he or does he exist how this universe was born because among all the animals we are superior but we have much many more questions than any other normal animal would do so that also we know so ultimately what the claim is man is alone in this meaningless world the entire world is meaningless so man is alone and not giving in to easy solutions or walking away Uh, from the comfort comforting uh, illusions i would call it as an illusion because any zone of comfort what we think may not be the reality it could be an illusion also uh, it may be painful but it ultimately leads one to such a freedom that you immediately relieve your stress so you are able to relieve your stress you are able to manage your stress that is a stress management according to absurdist that is why in the last resort theater of the absurd does not provoke uh, tears and uh, you know fears of uh, despair there is no more shedding tear, tears like you know but the laughter of liberation hence the name tragic comedy we call these absurdist plays as tragic comedy see we know that uh, shakespeare a uh, brilliant playwright he is known for his uh, tragedy like stories of tragedy so all his plays are tragic they have a tragic ending romeo will die juliet will die and whatever whatever like you know you take a, most of his plays couple of other uh, i mean happy ending plays are also there uh, written by him but more, mostly so certain poets are there they write only the tragic poems it all depends on one's experiences or that catharsis they want to just uh, shed their feelings or you know express themselves that's a different thing so that is tra- tragedy now comedy does not necessarily mean what we are watching on kapil sharma show or slapstick comedy it's not comedy is not all not means not only that actually comedy is a word that is opposite of a tragedy so something that will relieve you or that will make you feel better is comedy in that sense 
so there is a comic element added here also there is also dark humor there is also kind of situation when they are saying that the whole world is pointless the whole existence is useless that's not a very nice feeling for humans no so there is an element of tragedy they portray that also but it's a ultimately they leave you leave you thinking and there are there is no you know uh, propagation of negative idea i would say because these are all uh, thought provoking these are not just stories uh, to just read and cry and come out of the theater anyway so one such example i can give you is a tragic comedy an absurd play written in 1948 or 49 by samuel beckett originally it was written in french okay so in french it is uh, pronounced as onatana godo onatana godo it means waiting for godo you must have heard it like if you have not read also this is a very popular play and uh, it has uh, they uh, it has uh, shows are uh, you know like uh, it is staged in english and it is staged in hindi so a uh, worldwide uh, it's a very acclaimed play so you must have at least heard about it so just to give an example of this play as a tragic comedy or as a uh, absurdist play this play has only two scenes two acts rather two acts let me call it as acts okay and there are only six characters okay out of these six characters also one character never appears on the scene that is <laughs> another thing so five characters we will see and uh, you know what you start reading the play or you start uh, you know watching the play as in in the seated, seated in the audience you feel that the play is not moving at all it's like that 19 uh, you know uh, when the cinema began all like those uh, uh movies like you know the dialogues would come and then they were all like you know there was no sound track available and then it never used to move or even cycle ka zamana ka movies and all are they are very slow they don't pro- progress at all those kind of a thing so if you you will feel and yaar what like i got a ticket and came and what am i observing what is the meaning of this so you should actually you can't miss any moment and constantly your your brain has to be in a thinking mode then only you will understand this play otherwise you don't understand you will say what is this play i, I didn't like it and you will come off because there is no rhetoric like shakespeare in play so shakespeare if he, he shakespeare can glorify anything under the sun even the ugliest woman also is uh, he will glorify to such an extent you will fall in love with her or even the muscular cynic people also he will write so much about orlando he wrote okay like as you like it i think so like this uh, he is uh, he is writing style is totally different here these people are not bothered about literary devices they don't want rhetoric and they don't want to include any songs it is pure pure one trigger and one seed they sow in your head and you are supposed to see are you going to get any kind of a manure and water in the play and then go home and grow your own you know plant in the head that is the absurd is so here there are two characters one is vladimir and then the other one is uh, estrogan and uh, they engage in a variety of discussions uh, on the stage and a uh, lot of talking is going on and they are waiting for some unknown character unknown person i can't even call a person unknown somebody and uh, ultimately uh, his name he is they have named him as godo or they are saying i'm waiting for godo who never turns up so to know more about this play otherwise this video will become very long i don't want to make uh, two big ones so that uh, you know you can watch and then try to understand and try to appreciate so watch out for my next video i'll be discussing uh, samuel beckett's uh, renowned play that is waiting for godo and how this play applies even today in our life into our, i mean uh, to our life in general so that's going to be my next video So guys if you have really liked the video please share with your like minded friends and subscribe to my channel thank you god bless